This gentleman is braver than I am. He is going to tour the market, gnawing on a duck leg. That's my order too. Really? Yes, you just need a leg of duck. W.C. Fields once said, I'd rather be here than Philadelphia. But with all due respect to the gentleman, I beg to differ. I grew up near Philly. It's a city that's down to earth and shockingly beautiful, a place jam-packed with centuries of history, thriving culture, and people with genuine heart. And nowhere is that more obvious than Reading Terminal Market. It's the oldest continuously operating farmer's market in the country, and I've been coming here since I was a kid, back when there was sawdust on the floor and leaks in the ceiling. Nowadays, Reading Terminal is jam-packed with local vendors and merchants, and hungry shoppers eager to get a taste of the city of brotherly love. And today, I'm one of them. It's time to get lost in the supermarket. I couldn't be more excited right now. I am at the Dutch Eating Place, which is pretty much the heart and soul of the Pennsylvania Dutch section of Reading Terminal Market. Dutch, in this case, really means Deutsch, which means German. So these are German Americans who came here, in this case, just went about making amazing breakfast with all of the local ingredients, bacon, eggs, scrapple, that they make right where they're living. Coffee here at the Dutch Eating Place comes with local Lancaster County half and half. You get Lancaster County in every single facet of your meal. The size of these pancakes really says it all. They are draping over the side of the plate. And this butter is really special too because it's also super local. It has this like delicious savory note that blends in with the sweetness of the maple syrup. But the thing that I'm really excited about is the scrapple. It's like a loaf of tasty bits of a pig combined with cornmeal, formed into a loaf, sliced, fried into these slabs. Feel extra crispy. Classic regional dish. You definitely want to get it here, where they sell so much of it, and it's so fresh. Fortified by plate-sized pancakes and two kinds of breakfast meat, I'm ready to dive into the rest of the Amish section of the market, where lunch meats, pickles, and barbecue go head-to-head -head with sweeter delights like whoopie pies, cinnamon buns, and sweet, salty, soft pretzels. I was just heading to the Fair Food Farm stand to get some fruits and vegetables, but I couldn't help but stop here at the Hatfield Deli, where they not only have a beautiful assortment of bacon and scrapple and eggs and cheese, but also a kind of rainbow of lunch meats. Total regional Pennsylvania Dutch specialty, sweet Lebanon bologna. Dried chipped beef, country style ham, not only rare roast beef, but extra rare London broil. So here we've got the regular Lebanon bologna. It has this amazing like hickory style smokiness and a bit of an acidic tang. And this is the sweet Lebanon bologna which is shockingly sweet. With some pickles and mayonnaise on the sandwich would be absolutely delicious. It was also pretty good on its own. Philly's local food scene has grown exponentially in the past decade. And now at the market, you can find not just locally grown produce, but local dairy, cheeses, ice cream sandwiches, kombucha, pickles, and so much more. Another one of my favorite places in the market, the Fair Food Farm Stand. I'm going to try a bite of one of my favorite pink lady apples grown in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Awesome that you can see exactly which farm is growing your apples. Over here, you've got your Bucks County maple syrup. Amazing bread from one of the best bakeries in the country, High Street on Market. Locally rendered pure leaf lard for pie crust. A couple of spoonfuls of this with your butter. Absolutely amazing. Things start getting really interesting in the dairy section. One of my favorite yogurts of all time. It's like practically pudding when you eat it. I haven't even stirred it, and it looks like vanilla pudding. You can get raw milk here. This is a great place to get it, because they sell a lot of it, and it's always super fresh. Clean, rich, buttery flavor. This, I would totally just like sit down and have a glass of. Tucked inside the Fair Food Farm stand is a cheese shop unlike any other, since it only sells cheeses that are made from top-notch dairy at local farms. The Fair Food Farm stand does a really good job of curating an amazing selection of local cheeses. What about this Cherry Grove raw cow? This is called Lawrenceville Jack. from Cherry Grove Farms. Okay. It's really sharp cheddar. So you can find anything on the cheese spectrum here, from like a creamy cow to a super crumbly aged cheddar cow. 
It's the kind of cheddar that you really want to melt onto a grilled cheese sandwich. It's probably a little bit too good to melt onto a grilled cheese sandwich. It's just the dilemma with a cheese like this. If you're into things that are meaty and salty and extra, extra chewy, you'll be very happy here at Smucker's. Do you have a favorite? Can I try that? Mmm, really chewy, really delicious. You kind of want to just keep chewing it and keeping that super smoky, rich flavor in your mouth. The only thing as delightful as the food here is the ambiance. This is no sterile food court. Flashy new signage shares space with old school remnants of the market's past. There are a lot of new, amazing places to eat and drink at the market, but when you start looking up, you see some of the older signs of more old school type food purveyors here. This is one of my favorite signs here. Drink buttermilk and live forever. If you're in the market for meat, so to speak, Reading Terminal is the place to go. The butchers have been here forever, and the quality is second to none. This is one of a range of butchers that used to fill this market. Nowadays, only a few of them are still hanging on, including Martin's, but I'm especially partial to their homemade sausages. Really, any recipe that you're looking to cook for, you're going to find absolutely fresh sausage for it right here. Pennsylvania Dutch are absolute kings of any kind of preserved or pickled vegetable. So you got all your relishes, your pickles, your jams. There's just like a dizzying variety here. This is Metropolitan Bakery, which is pretty much the most old school artisanal bread bakery at the market. This is their second location. It's a great spot not only for artisanal breads, but muffins, croissants, cakes, cookies, pretty much anything you want. This is another example of one of the original old school vendors at the market. This is Godshall's Poultry. You gotta love a place that not only has an amazing assortment of poultry, but also has things like turkey necks, which are so good for stock or the base for a gravy, and they just make it really easy to get it right here. You got your gizzards, you got your liver, you got your heart, your feet, everything you want. Tucked away into one corner of Reading Terminal, right next to a million different food stalls is a place where you can get great ingredients to make your food at home. All the standard spices are here at the Head Nut, but more exotic things like Mombasa pepper, or Ajwain seeds, or smoked cumin seeds. If you need your Worcestershire sauce in powder form, they have it here for you. Troll these aisles and you can find pretty much anything you need for a recipe. So here we are at 12th Street Cantina, which is a delicious place for Mexican food in the market. They also have a lot of supplies that can be challenging to find in Philadelphia, like amazing homemade salsa verde, picante sauce, specialty cheeses like the Oaxacan cheese, the cotilla, cheese for enchiladas. You got your tried chipotles, anchos, guajillos, new Mexican chilies, and also harder to find Mexican versions of standard spices like oregano. The best thing about Reading Terminal being such a tourist mecca, it's no longer in any danger of being torn down. The worst thing, you need to be quick on your feet to work your way through the crowds. This is Thursday around lunchtime in the market. It's practically like duck crossing, train crossing. You're just fighting the crowds. You're bobbing and weaving, trying to remember how to get to your favorite place. Ooh. Sorry, go Sorry. Ahead. And now I've arrived. Sankey Peking Duck House, where not only is the duck crispy, roasted, and delicious, but the pork is so candied and juicy and rich that it practically has stalagmites of pork juices hanging off of it. Yes. My favorite part is actually watching them chop up the duck. So that's amazing too. He just basically ladled up some duck jus from a cauldron that also has whole pieces of duck floating in it. Skin, super crispy. Mm. Meat inside, so tender. With that hit of like star anise, Chinese five spice that makes baking duck so addictive. And the greens just make me feel better about everything I'm doing myself right now. Here we are at one of the iconic food purveyors in the market. The Nick's roast pork and beef. Classic place to get your roast pork, provolones, and green sandwich. For real Philadelphians, it's just as iconic and classic as the cheesesteak. 
This sandwich is so overstuffed that you are going to need a fork to shovel up everything that falls from it. Visible chunks of garlic poking out from broccoli rob, and it's also been coated on the roast pork. It's pretty much like a porky green garlic bomb. Chances are you'll end up eating at least three lunches in a row at Reading Terminal. And that's not counting dessert. With options ranging from old school Italian to old fashioned Amish, there's a treat for every sweet tooth. You've got the South Philly Italian thing represented here. This kind of says it all. Shells of cannoli, so they stay nice and crunchy. Filled to order. Filling not too sweet. It's totally spot on. These cookies, these are kind of like a cross between a cakey, fluffy cookie and a crunchy, crispy cookie. And they bake these cookies right over there in that oven. Thank you. These still feel a little bit warm, and it's just like absolutely chock full of chocolate and nuts. Mm. Super soft, chewy in the middle, crunchy on the outside. A critical mark of any really good cookie. The bag turns transparent after these cookies have been in it for a while. The grand finale of the trip is always a visit to Bassett's. Started in 1861, one of the oldest vendors at the market. Right now I'm tasting something called the WHYY Experience, named after the local public television company. Vanilla ice cream, butterscotch swirl, chocolate covered pretzels of course. Really like clean, creamy, dairy flavor. And I still really can't beat the experience of sitting at a marble countertop eating ice cream. Even after you're stuffed to the gills, you might still find yourself wandering the aisles of Reading Terminal, stocking up on groceries and soaking up that intangible feeling of Philly pride from every corner of the market. And on the off chance you'll be able to experience hunger again, it's always a good idea to buy an extra cookie or two for the trip home.